Hello students, welcome to the EPG Part Shala. I am Mrs. Pojwani from DEI Deem University, Agra. Today we are going to discuss about the module Zygotic Embryo Culture from the paper Plant Biotechnology and Crop Improvement, the basic and applied aspects of the technique of zygotic embryo culture. Embryo is the most important component of a seed. Other tissues of the seed are sub subordinate to the embryo. They either serve as a source of nutrition, such as the endosperm tissue, or protection of the embryo, such as the seed coat. Zygote is a product of fertilization, which through a predetermined pattern of cell divisions and development, which is characteristic of a species, forms an embryo. The structure of embryo is the basis of classification of all the flowering plants into two groups. The monocots, with embryos with single cotyledon, and dicots, the embryos with two cotyledons. Embryo in the seed is the progenitor of the next generation. In vitro culture of excised embryos provides an important system to study physiology and genetics of embryo development, which is not possible inside the ovule. It also offers many practical applications in the field of agriculture. This technique is being routinely used by plant breeders to produce rare hybrids of crop plants, which otherwise fail due to post-zygotic sexual incompatibility and therefore could not be produced by the conventional methods. You will see in this diagram the stages of embryo development in Capsella bursa pastoris, starting from a single cell zygote, developing up to a fully developed dicotyledonous embryo. Embryo, a product of fertilization, is the most important component of a seed. Other tissues of the seed are only supportive to embryo. They serve as tissue of nutrition and protection of the embryo. The embryo is the progenitor of the next generation. In vitro culture of excised embryos provides a system to study physiology and genetics of embryo development, which is not possible in ovulum. It also offers many practical applications in the field of agriculture. This technique is being routinely used to produce some rare hybrids of crop plants, and is a part of every plant breeding program. And one sees discussion on this topic in most of the books on plant breeding and genetics. The basic technique of embryo culture involves excision of intact embryo aseptically. The technique may vary with the experimental plant and the stage of embryo at which it is being excised. And you will see in the diagrams, the following two diagrams, which have shown the zygotic embryo isolation in Capsula bursa pistoris and in wheat. The location of embryo in the seed of capsula is lateral, so that in the mature seed, if you give a lateral incision and gently squeeze, the embryo will come out. In immature seeds, you can give a middle incision and push the embryo out of it. And similarly, one has to modify the technique of isolation of embryo, depending on the species, the structure of the flower, position of the embryo inside the seed. But 
the care should be taken that the embryo is not injured and it remains aseptic. If you are excising very young embryo, you might need the aid of a binocular. The second thing in the technique, the most important, is the culture medium. This may also vary with the plant in the stage of embryo. Mostly, Mavis medium has been used, but Monier found that in the case of Capsula bursa pistoris, MS medium supported the best growth of the embryo, but the person's survival of the embryo was low. On the other hand, a NOPS medium, which is a low salt medium, showed a better survival, but the growth of the embryo was poor. Therefore, he developed a new culture medium in which the potassium and calcium ions were high than the MS and ammonium ions were low. Suspensor is a ephemeral structure of embryo which is present in the early stages of embryo development. It uh, degenerates or is in an extremely feeble stage at maturity, if present. Number of studies have been made to understand its function. And all these structural, physiological, cytological, biochemical studies suggest that suspensor plays an important role in the nutrition of the embryo. And they also say that it is required only at the early stages. And experimental evidence to this effect comes from embryo culture, which also suggests that suspensor is important only at the early stages. Yang and Sussex in 1979 made a very detailed study on the role of suspensor in nutrition in the, in the plant physiolus. They cultured complete embryo at the globular, at the early heart shape stage. Embryo without the suspensor embryo in which the sus suspensor was removed and kept close by, and an embryo in near which a heat-killed suspensor was kept close by. And they monitored the survival and the growth of the embryo. It was found that if the suspensor was completely removed, the growth and the survival of the embryo was very poor. And it was best when the embryo was cultured with intact suspensor. Even when a suspensor was detached and kept close by, it promoted embryo growth. But if the suspensor was killed and then kept side by, it didn't have that promotory effect which suggests that a live suspensor, preferably attached to the embryo, is important in supporting the growth of the embryo. They also cultured and did similar experiments with older embryos at the heart, heart stage, late heart stage, and they found that at the older stage, there was no difference or oh, there was very minor difference whether the embryo was cultured with or without the suspensor intact. Another thing that they discovered that suspensor could be substituted by gibralic acid, which suggests that probably the suspensor provides gibralic acid for the growth and morphogenesis 
of the embryo in situ. So you will see the plate, a diagram which shows the system developed by Monier as two media plate system. The embryo has a special structure at the early stage of development called suspensor. It is at the micropylar end of the embryo and connects it to the micropylar end of the embryo sac. Structural, physiological, cytological, and biochemical evidences suggest that this embryo suspensor plays a special role in the nutrition of young embryos. Embryo culture supports the suspensor is required only in early stages, and Yang and Sussex, 1979, did a detailed experiment on embryo culture of physiolus and demonstrated that GA3 can substitute the suspensor. You'll see in the table culture of embryos at different stages of development and how the requirement decreases. Let us now talk about the applications of embryo culture. Embryo culture has both basic and applied applications. In the basic applications, I must say that the embryo culture is being very extensively used to understand the physiology and genetics of embryogenesis. And now people are trying to identify genes which are responsible for specific events in the embryogenic process. And a lot has been discovered and a lot of work is going on. Now, the physical and chemical factors that regulate orderly development of embryo can be understood only if the embryo is removed from the confines of its surrounding tissues. And this has helped a great deal. And we have understood the nutrition of embryo, which we were only a conjectured when we were in the case of seed. People were talking about the presence of endosperm, it supplies nutrition. Now one can culture the embryo and see the effect of various minerals, organic nutrients, osmotic pressure of the medium, etc. So we are now trying to understand more and more about the physical and chemical factor that regulate orderly development of embryo by culturing the embryos at different stages of development. We also know there is a special structure, an ephemeral structure in the embryo, especially at the early stage of development, called suspensor. This suspensor has been ascribed a role in nutrition of the embryo on the basis of its structural, physiological, cytological characteristics. But now, we have direct evidence to show that it plays a very important role in the nutrition of the embryo. People have excised the embryo and cultured it with and without the suspensor. And with the suspensor, which has been killed by irradiation, and it has come to be known clearly that when you culture the older embryos, Removal of suspensor does not affect its development. But if the suspensor is removed or kept by the side after irradiation and killing it, the embryo growth suffers. And this has been measured in terms of survival and the percentage growth of the embryo, which you will see in one of the tables. It is also possible when you remove the, the embryo from the ovules that how does the tissues surrounding the embryos influence the development, differentiation, and maturation, and even the induction of dormancy in the embryo. We know that there are plants 
which in which the seeds germinate immediately after formation, even on the parent plant. That's what we call a viviparity. On the other hand, we have plants which go dormant after fully development for months, and even under favorable condition, they will not germinate. Now, the dormancy factor may reside either in embryo or in the surrounding tissue. If the dormancy factor is residing in the surrounding tissue, then one can break the dormancy by excising the embryo, removing it from the confines of the surrounding tissue, and culturing it. This method of breaking the dormancy by excising the embryos and culturing on artificial medium has considerably helped in shortening the breeding cycles. For example, Randolph and Cox had reported that an iris, which has a life cycle of two to three years, could be reduced to one year by embryo culture. Similarly, sunflower has a life cycle of 120 to 150 days, in which the major part is during the embryo maturation and dormancy period. By excising 10-day-old embryos and culturing it, this period of the life cycle could be reduced to almost half, which means 60 to 75 days. And based on this, Elisa in 1986 raised four generations of sunflower in a year by culturing 7 to 18 days old embryos. If you can break the dormancy of the embryo by excising it and culturing it, it also gives you an edge that you can check the viability of the seeds very fast. Otherwise, when the seeds are dormant, the only way to check the viability is by staining. And staining test for viability is not the reliable test. The best test to check the viability of a seed is the percentage of germination. Therefore, by breaking the dormancy by embryo culture, one can have a rapid seed viability check. And a very interesting situation where embryo culture has helped is the propagation of rare plants. We know that a coconut has a cream and central cavity is filled with water, the coconut water. But there is a variety of coconut which in place of water has a soft fatty tissue which is very delicious and therefore this kind of a nut is a delicacy in some part of the world. And this coconut is called makapuno. The seeds of makapuno cannot germinate and it was found that if you culture the excised embryo of makapuno, the 85% of the plants that were raised by embryo culture were truly makapuno. So embryo culture provides a new approach to the multiplication of this rare plant, which yields high percentage of makapuno nut. The other application is haploid production. While talking about in vitro production of haploid, we described a method of distant hybridization in which after fertilization, the chromosomes of one of the parents are selectively thrown out and a haploid embryo is left. But normally, this embryo aborts and cannot develop into a fully developed embryo. Therefore, in such cases, excising the embryo before abortion and culturing on the medium has helped to raise full haploid plants. So the haploid production by the technique of distant hybridization is aided by embryo culture. And finally, most important application of embryo culture 
is in the production of rare hybrids, which was first demonstrated by Liebeck in the interspecific crosses in Linum, which was the first demonstration that embryo culture can help to raise rare hybrids, which is not possible by conventional methods. Similarly, in the case of Lilium speciosum and Lilium auratum, this cross was successful, embryo developed, but the size of the embryo was very large, and the endosperm size was very large. And when these seeds were sown for germination, the embryo degenerated and could not be obtain a full plant. But if this embryo was excised from this seed and cultured in artificial medium, it developed into the full plants. Similarly, Enomata crossed Brassica chainensis with Brassica pecinensis, and this cross is also incompatible with postzygostic incompatibility, and they were able to produce triploid hybrids. Ayer and Goval have produced several interspecific hybrids in rice by embryo culture. In tomato, Lycoparsicum esculentum, when it is crossed with Lycoparsicum peruviana, there's no fertilization. But when you have a reciprocal cross, that means peruviana is taken as a female parent and crossed with esculentum, fertilization occurs but embryo aborts prematurely. Thoman and Spread excise 35 days after pollination the embryo. The embryo did not develop directly into plant. Instead, it calloused. Thus, in this lecture, you have learned that embryo culture is a very important in vitro technique with wide and varied applications and is being routinely used by plant breeders to produce some rare hybrids which are otherwise not possible due to postzygotic sexual incompatibility. It has aided understanding the nutrition of embryo at different stages of development. Although it has been possible to culture pro-embryos and in vivo and in vitro form zygotes, but it has been possible only with the aid of a nurse tissue. We still don't understand the chemical nature of the factor provided by the nurse tissue, which is so essential for nurturing the zygote or a very young embryo. The most important applications of embryo culture is in raising rare hybrids, which have not been possible due to sexual incompatibility, particularly postzygotic. Other applications of embryo cultures are that it helps to shorten the breeding cycle by breaking dormancy, production of haploids by distant hybridization where the haploid embryo formed by the elimination of the chromosomes of one of the parents would not develop to maturity but abort at a younger stage and therefore requires to be excised in culture. Thus embryo culture is a step in the production of haploid by distant hybridization. Embryo culture has also helped in the propagation of rare plants such as macapuno, coconuts. Thank you.